Спасибо, пожалуйста. Hello Rekshi, good evening. So is this your first class? Hello, Rekshi, am I audible to you? Mohammed and Rekshi, am I audible? So Rekshi, is it your first class? I haven't seen you in any of my previous classes. That is why I'm asking that question. All right. Uh, so, you know, we are we have started a new topic uh, that is the money and banking. That portion we are doing. And uh, in the last class, we studied about the functions of money. Okay, we discussed uh, functions of money, its role. Then we discussed about the demand and supply of money, the various theories which determine the supply of money. That all has been discussed in the uh, last class. Now, uh, the, in the next, in today's class, we are going to discuss about the important functions of banks. Okay, important functions of bank, and amongst those functions, the most important is the credit creation by a bank. Rekshi, you have any idea about this credit creation by bank? No. Okay. Uh, credit means like uh, credit creation is a uh, function which is performed by essentially uh, the essentially by every bank of the country and it is like how a single single currency is used over a period of time and a number of times and then it helps in the creation of much more money in the economy okay that is called the credit creation so i'll just uh, go through the slides go through the ppt and then i'll explain it to you on the whiteboard okay so over here we are discussing with reference to the rbi you understand what is rbi dekshi What is RBI? No? Okay. RBI stands for Reserve Bank of India. Like in every country, there is a central banking authority. Every country has its own central bank. So that bank is the, it is the like a banker of the banks. It is at the topmost level in the whole hierarchy. And it is the central bank. It, it is directly in contact with the government and it functions in accordance with the policies of the government all the major decisions are taken by this type of bank okay so this is um, so like uh, every country uh, has got a uh, central bank of its own and it is responsible for framing the framing the monetary policies monetary means related to the money so all the monetary policies of the com of a country they are formulated by the RBI. In fact, RBI is the authority which implements the various uh, policies. 
okay as far as monetary part is concerned related to money like how much money has to be printed how much has to be circulated in the market that all is going to be decided by the central bank of the country so with reference to india it is rbi the reserve bank of india so uh, the central bank has has the monetary authority it formulates implements and monitors the monetary policy what is the objective its objective is the is to maintain the <clears throat> price stability and ensuring adequate flow of credit to the productive sectors okay it is the regulator and supervisor of the financial system it prescribes broad parameters of banking operations within which the country's banking and financial systems function the objective is to maintain the public confidence in the system protect depositors interest and provide cost effective banking services to the public if these services are not offered by the banks if they are like public has no confidence in the bank system uh the uh, they the banking becomes expensive affair for them it no longer remains cost effective then people will stop going to the bank and the economy of the country will come to an end it will come to halt so to keep a check on all this there is a central banking authority uh, what is the name of the central bank of uh, uh, your ua can you tell me don't know okay then next important function is it is the manager of the foreign exchange like how much foreign exchange is going to flow into a country that is also regulated by the rbi the movement of the free and hassle free movement of the foreign exchange because if we are going to have too much of um foreign exchange in the country then our own currency will become very weak it will get it will get devalued so we need to have a check on that also the objective is to facilitate external trade and payment and promote orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in india okay that simple then it is the issuer of currency issues and exchanges or destroys the currency and coins not fit for circulation like we use money we use money in every in every country there is a currency and we use it now from where does that money come that money is printed by the reserve bank of india they have their own printing press and there it is printed okay so that men that free flow of currency in the economy has to be maintained by the central bank in case of india it is rbi good evening darshna so today we are discussing about the credit creation and the monetary policy of the banks okay credit creation is a very important functions of the banking system so we are discussing about that so what is the objective to give the public adequate quantity of supplies of currency notes and coins and in good quality like sometimes what happens is the currency which becomes very uh, like very much destroyed very withered it it gets torn it gets faded it gets cracks on it so uh, the the bank the reserve bank what does it do it recollects that currency uh, and it it uh, gives it a new form okay if it's a coin it may be melted to make new coins and if it is a note then they can just uh, reconstruct it they can uh, reprint it so that is how it works 
Now it has got some developmental roles as well. It performs a wide range of promotional functions to support the national objectives. Like if there are many, uh, what does the ministers do? Like the finance minister, what does he do in the budget? He just formulates the policy. Now how that policy will be implemented? Who will keep a check on that? That is the role of the central bank of the country. The bank is going to keep an eye on the implementation and functioning of that policy in the economy. So uh, it helps in the promotional functions to support the national objectives of the country. Okay. It is the banker to the government. It performs merchant banking functions for the central and the state governments also acts as their banker. Now sometimes what happens is um, the central government is also in need of money. Central government is in need of money like it has to start a new plan for starting that new plan it may need money. Now from where is that money going to come? That money will be provided to it by this bank, the central bank of the country. That is the reason why central bank is called the banker to the government. It, they function as the banker to the government of the country. It can be central government or it can be the state government. Did you get it? Darshana? Okay, so what is next is the banker to the bank. It maintains the banking accounts of all scheduled banks. What is the meaning of scheduled banks? You know? Uh, corporate? No, no, no. Uh, scheduled banks means the banks which are scheduled. Scheduled means which appear in the schedule of the government or we can say they, which have the license. Nobody can perform the functions, uh, the banking functions without having the license. So, sched scheduled bank means the license banks. Just a minute. Okay, so it has to maintain the accounts of all the scheduled banks. Okay, the banks which are registered. It will maintain their banking accounts and it will keep a check on them also. And sometimes these banks, they are left with no other option. Means they don't have to, uh, they don't have uh, any resort. Then what happens is they come to the central bank. The central bank helps them with the available options. So that is why it is called banker to bank. It may give money to these banks. It may help them in carrying out the various functions. Uh, in case of any emergency, it will be the lender of the last resort. It will provide them the last help which they can get. It's like the guardian to them. Okay.
हेलो सो एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू ऑल जब उसम कनेक्शन है रस ओके सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दिस फंक्शन बैंकर टू बैंक सो दीज आर द मेन फंक्शंस ऑफ द बैंक नाउ दिस इज अबाउट द द लेवल ऑफ सेविंग्स और लेवल ऑफ मनी विद द गवर्नमेंट ओके सो दिस there is a this is m0 m stands for money so m0 m0 means the currency in circulation plus bankers deposits with the rbi plus other deposits with the rbi this is the amount of money in the economy that's the currency that is being used that is in the circulation the banks they make like common people go to banks to make their deposits the banks make their deposits with the rbi because rbi is there um like it's the main authority and other deposits with the rbi now m1 is the currency with the public demand deposits with the banking system and other deposits with the rbi so demand deposits means those which are not time bound like the time deposits are like fixed term fixed deposit which are for a fixed period of time and demand deposits are they can be broken on demand whenever there is a need the money can be withdrawn by breaking these deposits we can go to the next this is just a indication of that now after 1998 like this policy was adopted prior to 19 98 and after 1998 the things have changed this is the new equation currency in circulation plus bankers deposits with rbi plus other deposits with the rbi it is the same there is no change in this one there's a change in m1 and and it's more or less the same only we can now go with go to the main part that is the credit creation okay and now what is this credit creation how do banks create money create money means to make money so do they mint money do they print more money and circulate they cannot do that because that function is exclusively with the reserve bank the other banks cannot do that so who uh, how do they create money they create money in a different manner okay so we will see how they create money okay so now you can see here is a small chart which is going to explain it like suppose there is mr a uh there is mr z he comes to bank a and he makes a initial deposit of 100 rupees okay he deposits 100 rupees initially then uh, the banks have uh like uh, they deposit 100, 100 rupees mr x deposits and the banks have a policy that they uh, they will what will the bank do with this money the bank will uh further give this money to another party who can use it for its own purpose like we deposit the money in the bank then wh where does that money go do you think that it is it, like if we have made an fdr that money is safely in the locker of the bank no that is not with the bank the bank pass over that money to another needy person so this is how economy function the surplus funds of one person goes in the hands of the uh, goes to meet the deficit of the other person okay
कैन यू रीड वॉट आई हैव रिटर्न सरप्लस ऑफ वन पर्सन गोज टू मीट द डेफिसिट ऑफ अनदर पर्सन हु हैज अ डेफिसिट बाय बैंक दिस हैपन्स थ्रू द मीडियम ऑफ द बैंक ना सपोज a person comes and deposit 100 rupees with bank a now what will this bank a do it will keep a certain percent as reserve that is called the cash reserve ratio crr okay the bank deducts a certain percentage of money from this 100 and it will pass on the remaining amount to another person now suppose bank gives this uh, the crr has been decided as 20 so it will give after deducting 20 what will be left 20% of 100 will be 20 so what will be left rikshi darshna 80 yes so it's going to hand over 80 to mr b okay yeah you can see that so uh we can now come back to this only 100 the lent out is 80 means 80 has been given and 20 has been kept as reserve as the, at the rate of 20% okay 20 is with the bank and 80 has been uh, given out to the other person now this other person goes and deposit this 80 rupees in bank b so here 80 then again 20% of 80 that is 16 so the bank will keep its share of 16 rupees as a reserve and that 64 rupees is free to be given forward now this 64 rupees suppose it comes to bank c this person goes and deposits it in bank c now bank c again after keeping the 20% that is 12.8 will hand over the balance amount to a another person so 51.2 rupees is given to a new party now this new party deposits this in bank d now bank d after deducting 12% uh, sorry 20% at the rate uh, that is equal to 10.24 it will give this remaining amount 40.96 to another person now that person goes to e bank e then f then g h i j and so on Till, till bank K. Now, how much is left? Only ten rupees seventy-four paisa is left to be given as a reserve. Very less amount is that. Okay. So now, if we do the total of all this, we will see it's not visible now. The total. it's not visible actually it's visible can you see the figure written total amount of deposits can you see that yeah that is there can you see this one total amount of deposits where i'm pointing it's 453 point something dashna what is that figure 457 okay and what about this one total amount lent out Three fifty-seven, and what is this total reserve plus last amount deposited? Hundred. All right. So now we see that the total amount of deposits that is available with the bank is four fifty-seven. The total amount lent out is three fifty-seven, and total reserve plus last amount deposited is. Hundred. So you see that initially this was hundred only. This hundred rupee note, it has created so much money with it. Like four hundred and fifty-seven rupees has been created, has been uh, it, like it's available with the various. Bank. So in totality, it's four fifty-seven 
rupees in circulation now we can say and total amount lent out is 357 this was just initially just 80 rupees were given that 80 has been converted into 357 in all and this reserve which was initially 20 has now moved to 100 or it just reserves we say it has gone up to 89 so this is credit creation process by the bank like what happens is the money passes from bank A to B to C to D to E and so on in the economy and the banks every bank after keeping a certain percentage as a reserve which is mandatory that is a guideline that has been issued by the reserve bank they have to keep a certain percentage as their uh, reserve and then the remaining amount is available to be given further so and so forth so this is how small amount of money transforms into a gigantic amount because of this credit creation process by the banks okay do you understand this credit creation Rikshri Darshana are you sure Okay. Now what is this money multiplier? This money multiplier is the like it is how many times a sum of money can be given further that is determined by this money multiplier. So this formula stems from the fact that the sum of amount loaned out column above can be expressed mathematically as a geometric series with a common ratio of 1 minus r. So people may not deposit all their cash into the banking system. Besides the money we keep in our wallets, we may save some of our money outside the depository banking system. Yes, like sometimes we keep some amount of cash in our home also at times. And sometimes we invest in different things apart from banks. So what is that? The formula is 1 plus currency drain upon currency drain plus desired reserve ratio. This is the formula for calculating the uh, this uh, how much is the value of the money multiplier. Now let's see further. Now, what are the liabilities of RBI? Like RBI is the uh, topmost authority, topmost banking authority of the company of a country like India. I am talking about India because I am using the word RBI uh, or we can say the central bank. Now, what are the monetary liabilities of the central bank of any country? First, high powered money. It means it, ha it is the caretaker of the liabilities of the RBI plus the government money the go it is the custodian of the money of the government so it has to be very careful in its dealings what are the other liabilities currency with the public the reserves and other deposits with RBI like every bank they have a certain reserve they keep certain reserve like that uh, in this process of credit creation only that 20% was the cash reserve ratio so the basic purpose of the reserve is to meet out any unfortunate circumstances and to maintain the desired liquidity level of the economy and the bank so that reserve plus the other deposits with RBI so reserves is equal to vault cash plus deposits with RBI plus excess reserve What is the meaning of this reserve? It includes the vault cash, deposits with the RBI, the excess reserves. Now, do you understand the meaning of uh, this one? Vault uh, reserve.
vault cash actually i used the wrong term vault reserve you know actually it is the uh, the money like which is kept free which is kept uh, in hand to meet out the everyday business needs to meet out the day to day uh, reserve day to day business needs like uh, a bank need a certain money for its daily transactions okay so that is also we can say uh, it can like uh, it it can be included as the part of the reserve of the reserve bank part of the de deposits of the reserve bank it is an asset of the reserve bank we can say now here is a balance sheet of the federal reserve system gold is there loans to depository institutions this is mean this is the uh, loan that has been sanctioned to the other banking institutions like there are various banks like we have uh, state bank of india we have punjab national bank we have uh, allahabad bank we have oriental bank of commerce i'm talking about india so all these banks they will fall under this category loans to depository institutions now since this is for federal reserve system means the federal bank of us we are talking about us so it has got us treasury securities other assets and all that so you can see the balance sheet is balancing well okay that is the uh, main point now uh, we have discussed a little bit about the monetary policy monetary means related to money so these are the policies which are in to the hands of the central bank of the country they are the measures which are with the central bank and central bank can use them from time to time to keep a check on the flow of money in any uh, country like uh, you remember rashna in the last class we discussed about inflation and deflation you have in, you remember that topic you have an idea okay just can you just uh, brief the other students about that a little bit what is what we discuss we discuss about inflation so what is that darshna what is inflation can you just tell inflation is based on market okay that is correct but what is what does it exactly mean what is inflation rekshi you have idea what is inflation you know it's a simple term what is the meaning of inflation Mm. Okay. Yeah, when prices go up and uh, the value of the currency goes down, that is called inflation. The price rise. Yes, in simple terms, it is the price rise. So, if there is a price rise in the economy, to certain extent, it is good. But if it goes beyond that level, it is very dangerous for the economy. So, in that case, the government asks the central bank to use its monetary policy to. keep a check on the whole situation so that monetary policy is a tool that is used by the central bank to 
balance the odd situations in any economy. So it is of three types. One is the open market operations. Then there is reserve requirements and there is discount window lending. Okay, so now we will see each of them in detail. Open market operations are those in which the bank is directly involved and it offer it like it it in engages itself in direct selling and buying in the market. Okay. So what is that that it offer for sale? It offers the government securities. Okay. It offers the securities. Now what are these securities? What they are literally? Can you then? Okay, so I'll tell you. Like, uh, we invest money in shares. Okay, so shares are the uh, ownership of the uh, government, like over ownership of the company. They offer ownership of the uh, companies. So these securities are like they are just piece of paper, but they have got lots of value. They uh, you invest in them, then what will happen? Your money will be kept secured and safe. You will earn interest on it. And uh, after the span of time, when you will get that money back, when it will mature, it will be a very huge amount. Or you may have some additional benefits also. You have life insurance. Uh, you may have insurance coverage or anything else. Something like that. That is the government security. So when the government wants to control, to curb the um, the changing or rather want to change the situation prevailing in the economy, it will resort to this method. So it will either sell the securities or it will either buy the securities from the people. Okay. Now what will happen? If like there is inflation in the economy. So inflation is a problem. In inflation there is a price rise. So what will the government do? This there, there is price rise because of the increased supply of quantity of money in the economy, isn't it? The Darshana is that right? The prices are rising because the people have too much of money in their hand and they can they have they are free to purchase anything and because of this the demand for products goes up which leads to an increase in their prices because when the prices are high the demand is also high isn't it rekshi darshna so if the government has to check the inflation what it will do it will ask the rbi to sell its securities. When the bank will start issuing its securities in the market, bank security is a very uh, government security rather. Government security is a very secured means of investment. So a lot of people will like to invest in them. So they will start selling. So people will invest their money in that. So what will happen? The liquid money, the cash which people were having in their hand, they will now flow from them to the bank. And the bank can then use it effectively. Okay. And the reverse will happen when the government would like to. Uh, like when the government would like to. Create an inflation type of situation. Sometimes the government may want that. Uh, especially in case of a developing economy. If the government if the economy is very depressed. It is not very uh, like very rosy then what will happen the government may encourage inflation in the economy so that because of inflation the production will increase the banking the business will, will improve that all is the target of the government so in that case the government will uh, start buying the 
uh, buying security from the people like the people who have already invested in them they have been holding it when government will ask for that they will readily give it to the government in openly okay so what will happen the government will buy from the government will buy from the people uh, and in the in return it will give money to them so they will have lots of money in their hand their purchasing power will increase so because of this increased purchasing power the demand will increase and that will lead to an increase in the price uh, level and everything will follow okay and these government securities can be gilt edged bonds notes and bills gilt edged means those which are backed up by gold okay did you understand that open market operations how is it effective okay so open market operations serves to steer short term interest rates to manage the liquidity situation in the monetary market and to signal the stance of monetary policy so this is just something for your information you can just read it when rbi eases when rbi tightens RBI or you can just compare it with the central bank of your country so you can just have a look at it please read all of you something to be read Is it? And that's not okay. Your question is. RBI is government bank so why it buy government securities it will just buy those securities to strengthen itself okay the next time when there will be need it will again sell those securities in the market yes government keeps all its money with RBI RBI is the authority which has the hold of that it is like the treasurer for the government we can say Now I'll take it to other. Now open market operations. Uh, the RBI buys bonds from the bank. Bank reserves in the monetary base increases. Sometimes it may just buy from the banks also, the individual banks like uh, Punjab National Bank, State Bank of India, Oriental Bank, uh, and uh, sometimes private banks also like ICI and all. So. the rbi buys bonds from those banks the bank reserve and the monetary base increases banks don't want money sitting in their vaults earning zero return so they attempt to loan out the money to attract the borrowers bank lowers the interest rate that they charge you must have seen um, every now and then in the news the home loan rate has gone down the education loan rate has gone down and xyz things are there 
So that is just to attract the borrowers. The business and the individuals who borrow the money from the yes repo rate, borrow the money from the bank, spend it on the goods and services. So what happens? These expenditures create income that are deposited into the banking system. Like people are spending on goods and services. So where is that money going? It is going in the hands of the people as income. Their income will increase. So they will come again to the bank to keep that increased money, the extra money which they hold. So the money supply increases by a greater amount than the original RBI purchase of bond because of the money multiplier. That money multiplier effect that we have seen. So increase in investment activity by business will increase aggregate demand and the growth rate of GDP. It will lead to an increase in gross domestic product of the country as well. Now the next is discount window lending. That was about the open market operations. Open market operations is nothing but when the bank, the central bank of the country resolves to selling of securities in the selling or buying of securities in the market. That is open market operation. Now discount rate is the interest rate that the RBI charges the banks for the short term loans. Changes in the discount rate typically occurs in conjunction with changes in the bank rate. This is like the you, this all is important when we have a look at the budget or when we hear the budget people have all their eyes placed on this only. If suppose the discount rates are raised, discount rates means the rates at which the bank is the central bank. Uh, like suppose Oriental Bank of Commerce is in some kind of problem, it will go to central bank for getting some of its securities discounted to get money from them. So what will the bank do in this case? The bank will increase the if the bank has increased the discount rate, the RBI, then what will happen? The economic activities will slow down and this will have a check on inflation. Slows economic activity. And check the inflation. Now if the discount rate is lowered, means now they are, the reserve bank is charging less money from the other banks. Then what happens is it stimulates the economic activity. How? Uh, because it is charging less money now. So more money is available with the people. It, more money is available with the bank which they can issue as credit to their customers. That process of credit creation can be now initiated. And because of that small amount of money will take a huge form. So people will have more money in their hands, hence more demand, the economic activity will be stimulated and hence there will be economic growth in the country. Okay. Now reserve requirements. Reserve requirements are the percentages of certain types of deposits that banks must keep on hand in their own vaults or on deposits at a reserve bank of India. Like this is for that cash reserve ratio and sometimes you hear that repo rate. The central bank has decided to lower the repo rate by 2%. So that is this only reserve requirement. If the central bank increases that, then what happens? The banks will have less money in hand to offer to the public. So their lending will be reduced. Okay, they will have lesser amount of money in the hands to lend it to the people. Then if they will lower the reserve, then uh, it, like they were taking 20%, now they are taking 15%. So 85 rupees is available with the bank to offer as credit to the public. Initially they had only 80 rupees in the previous example. So now that 85 will in, uh, means they have 85, so they can lend more to the public. Okay.
Now these uh, liquidity reserves may be known by different names. The one is the cash reserve ratio. Okay, that is CRR. Now what is the CRR? It is the uh, they have to keep a certain like CRR is suppose the uh, bank is having assets worth 5 crore okay so with reference to that 5 crore or in proportion to that 5 crore it will have to keep a certain ratio a certain reserve with the reserve bank of India that is mandatory more uh, more will the cash you will have in your bank more you will have to keep the cash reserve ratio uh, the, the more will be the cash reserve ratio for you okay the basic purpose of this is to maintain the monetary stability in the country you can just read what is there it is simple what is the purpose of using the CRR policy Then similar to that there is an SLR that is statutory liquid ratio. It is a term used in regulation of banking in India. It is the amount which a bank has to maintain in the form. Like it has to maintain certain amount of money in the form of cash or gold valued at a price not exceeding the current market price or unencumbered approved securities. Means there has to be a balance between these three. The if like uh, the reserve bank doesn't keep a check on the other banks then what will happen they will be free and they will give out all their assets to the public so just to and in case there is any mishappening, happening in case they become uh, bankrupt or something then from where will the losses be made good so to avoid that the bank asks the reserve bank asks them to maintain certain percentage with them compulsorily okay so this is it for today the uh, like we have covered the main uh, topic and the remaining things are not so major they are just minor things so the main thing that we needed today was the uh, credit creation and the functions of the bank, the monetary function so that we have discussed. Okay, so thanks for your time, everybody, and uh, it was good to see uh, you all in the class. So, have a great week ahead, enjoy your weekend, and see you all in the next class. Alright, and kindly go through your text so that. Uh, you can just clarify your doubts in the next class if you have any. Alright. Dekshi, Darshna, Muhammad. Okay. And please fill the feedback that you are going to get at the end. Feedback form. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night.